Welcome to The Composer's Corner. Man for some of the greatest players in the world, uh, amongst them Bob Dylan. And in fact, you did the Newport Festival with Bob Dylan. I think that was your first gig with him when he decided to go the opposite of unplugged, when he decided to electrify. Now, this is your first gig with Bob Dylan. How old were you? Oh, God, I must have been about 22. 22 years. How did you get the gig? Well, it was by accident, actually. Uh, I came to Newport, Rhode Island, with the Paul Butterfield Band to play piano with Butterfield. And when I got to Newport, uh, Butterfield had a producer, uh, his name was Paul Rothschild. And without even hearing me, he said, I don't hear keyboards with the Butterfield Band. Later on, he did with Mark Naftalin, right? But at that time, he just wanted to keep it a five-piece band, and he didn't care that I came all that way or anything, and I was really bummed out. So we, we were all sitting around in this big house and Michael Bloomfield was there and Michael was there to play with Bob Dylan. And I had heard the demo a few months before that of Like a Rolling Stone that Michael cut with Dylan in New York. And I, and I knew the song and uh, my, Bob Dylan walked in and he said, you know, I think I would like to use two keyboard players, you know, for the gig. And I don't know what to do. And Michael said, well, Barry, man, he can, he'll do it, you know. And that's how it happened. Bob said, hey, man, would you play with me tonight, you know. And I said, absolutely. Are you kidding? You know, this is right. So what turned into, what started out as a bummer turned into probably one of the, another memorable moment in my life and career. And we went on stage. We did a short sound check. And uh, Al Cooper was the other keyboard player. And the other members of the Butterfield Band, Jerome Arnold was on bass and Sam Lay was on drums. And we went up on stage, Bob had his leather jacket on, you know, and we were on a mission, you know. And Bob had a concept of a new kind of music that he wanted to get out right away. And the, the kind of music was called folk rock. And that was the beginning of folk rock. People uh, at the concert, some people were not, did not accept it. And it sort of signaled maybe the end, and they felt threatened of, a, of an era, of the folk era, right? And they felt betrayed by Bob. But, but any time you have change, any time you do something different, everyone's not going to like it. And they're not going to know what it is right away. They're not going to know that it's the next step up. You know, it's creating a new kind of music. And Bob had that in his mind, that he wanted to do it. And we were like on a mission, all of us, you know? And we accomplished that mission. And by the time we did Like a Rolling Stone, uh, Al Cooper was playing bass on that, actually. And uh, we knew that it was something really special and uh, that we were pioneers and doing something that was going to be around for a long time. And other people would, you know, pick up on that, like Tom Petty and uh, Mark Knopfler and, and the whole, and the birds and yeah. birds. that whole thing, you know. And we created that music at that moment right there. And if you see the documentary, The Other Side of the Mirror, the Murray Lerner film, you, you'll hear that there were a lot of cheers amongst the boos. There were more cheers than there were boos, you know, but it was a folk crowd. Yeah. And after that, it was the last of the, the Newport folk concerts. So you killed the Newport folk concerts. Well, you know, I, I, Are you proud of this? Not, you know, it's, 